You know, when you hear me talk about boxing and I speak about the boxers of today, I always bring up something called throwback fighters. And some people didn't know what I meant by throwback fighters when I first brought it up. But I think now um, people know the definition of a throwback fighter. Um, it's something that I brought up while assessing and looking at these new generations of fighter. I noted that there's a huge gap. There's a huge gap in mentality, in physical ability, in heart, and in determination, and in work ethic. You know, I noticed that. So I always brung it up like these guys can't hold a candle to people who came before them. So I always bring up throwback fighter, throwback fighter. As a matter of fact, um, I was the first one who brought up, who mentioned the phrase of a throwback fighter. As far as YouTube goes, you know, um, wasn't nobody else using that. So that's kind of a term that I brought to the forefront to compare these fighters. But nonetheless, when I talk about throwback fighters, it's just to say that I want to reproduce the era that my father and my uncle got to enjoy and witness. Well, not me personally reproduce it, but I hope that it returns and that's what I want to see and that's what I want to experience. So that's why I'm always talking about these boxers and what they do and what they don't do. That's why somebody like Teofimo Lopez stood out to me because I was like, wow, that's some throwback fighter shit, you know? So... I like things like that because it's like the return of the old school. And if you look, those was the classical fights, man. Those fights, you know, when my son grows up, he's going to be watching the same Hearns and Hagler fights. The point is we are not producing fights to replace those fights for the next generation. We're, we're forever going to be stuck at the Four Horsemen. We're forever going to be stuck in a Duran era, in the Hearns era, we'll, we'll, we'll forever be stuck there. When are we going to recreate what they did so we can have a new addition? When? Anyways, I bring this article up today because this is what it has come down to. Okay? This is what it's come down to. Okay? And this is pretty accurate right here. And this is fair to say on both ends. Okay? It says that neither Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford seem interested in making the fight, but the fans want to see it. Now, this is the boxing world talking, and they're saying neither Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford, neither one of these guys look like they want this fight. Their fans want it, but they don't seem to think it's a priority. Yeah, that's what it's gotten down to. And you know what? Have them both share this. Since it takes two to tango, since every great fighter needs a dancing partner, yes, they're going to have to both share this because they have both said things that would seemingly hold this up. Some to the greater degrees than, than others, but to be fair and for fanboys' blood pressure's sake, we are just going to say, let them share this evenly. But this is what it's come down to. You've come down to an era of fighters that don't want to fight. That don't want to fight. Straight up. Now, I want to play you guys a clip. Because it breaks and subscribes and tells you so much about this situation. And how we should look at it and how boxing used to look at things. Notice I say used to look at things. And the whole and this whole thing came about with the whole uh Terrence Crawford showing up to Errol Spence fight and Errol Spence basically denouncing it, not liking it, saying he don't know why he showed up, whatever and whatnot. And I spoke that that's boxing tradition. That's nothing new. That's what's supposed to happen. Um it doesn't look good that Errol Spence says something like this. Do you know how boxing goes? Do you know what that says to the hardcore? You know, and I brought all of this up. Well, this clip brings everything justice. When I play this clip to you, 
Listen to how Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson engage each, engage each other. Look at how Evander Holyfield feels about Mike Tyson attending one of his fights. Peep the whole mentality of not just the fighters, but of the boxing world and how showing up to another fighter's fight and all that stuff, how it was perceived and what they thought of you when you did something like that. All right, let's roll it. My goal, I want to be the heavyweight champion of the world. I was told at eight years old, I could be it if I don't quit. All I want to do is reach that goal. Tonight, Holyfield looks to lock up the undisputed cruiserweight title, then go up in weight and eventually fight for the heavyweight title against Mike Tyson. His trainers estimate about six months to turn him into an equally effective 200 plus pound fighter. He'll step up into the heavyweights, bulk up, and try to go for El Dorado, who's sitting on the other side of that ring in the form of Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, the undisputed heavyweight champion. Your impression of the fight, particularly Evander Holyfield. Please note that Mike Tyson showed up to Evander Holyfield's fight. Why? Because he wanted to fight him. Holyfield ready for Mike Tyson? He's a good fighter. I met him at um, National Golden Gloves. I was 14 or 15. He was a nobody. No one knew who he was. Holly, holy, how we can pronounce his name even, I remember. He just came out of nowhere. He actually really just came out of a puff of smoke and started beating everybody. A blistering attack by Evander Holyfield. Round eight. Bill Slade steps in. He has stopped the fight. Evander Holyfield is the undisputed cruiserweight junior heavyweight champion of the world. There's a gentleman who's been seated over here. His name is Mike Tyson. You saw him. Yes, I saw Mike Tyson. Uh, you know, as I really appreciate him being here and show that uh, he really cared about the sport and knowing that someday that man him might have to run Evander Real Deal Holyfield, a former undisputed champion, says that he can tell Mike Tyson cares about the sport of boxing just by him attending his fight because he's making it well aware and known that these two eventually have to fight i'm going to play that again to rub it in you saw him yes i saw mike tyson uh, you know as i really appreciate him being here and show that uh he really cared about the sport and show that uh he really cared about the sport That's Chasing Tyson, a documentary on ESPN+. Plus. I advise you to go watch it. It was a really good documentary. I really liked it. And as a matter of fact, it's a couple clips that I'm going to take from this documentary that I can use to prove some examples about what's going on in boxing. So the documentary is basically about Evander Holyfield chasing Tyson to solidify his legitimacy as a heavyweight contender. It talks about how two fighters need each other in order to achieve that pinnacle. Like I said, it's a great little documentary. Go watch it. I'm going to be revisiting um, scenes from this documentary, you know, to help further along explain what I feel about boxing in the current situation and what I see. But there it is. Evander Holyfield told you. He can tell that Mike Tyson cares about the sport of boxing by him attending his fight. Not saying he's across the street. Not saying, oh, Sean Porter got a belt. Not saying, why don't I go the easy route? Not saying... Uh, I want to fight Pacquiao first. None of those things. And even though Errol Spence has racked up more excuses than Terrence Boyle Crawford ever could and has done, I'm still willing to share the responsibility 
as a boxing fan and not as a fan of a man. Okay? Have them both share this responsibility. Because at this point, all we want is to see fights that we've had to grow up watching over and over and over again. Wishing and hoping maybe we can see that in our generation. Maybe we'll know what it feels like to attend a Mike Tyson fight. Maybe we will have one fighter out of our generation that can duplicate the buzz and the the air of mystery of Mike Tyson. You know, we get close here and there. As soon as we get some mega fights like Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, that would have been a big one. You know what I'm saying? We got another one on the horizon. Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury. You know, these are epic fights to be made. These are fights that's going to be remembered. You know, but this is the problem with this generation of boxers. The one thing I can say about this generation of boxers, I'm proud of you guys getting your money. I am. But somewhere lost the line, I think you guys lost what boxing was really meant for the that that little special thing that makes boxing unique from any other sport back then people cared more about being considered number one than the money you know they really cared about their reputation they really cared about being the baddest man on the planet it was important to them these guys held their self to a different standard. They walk different. They talk different. They move different. They train different. Therefore, that's why they have legacies, resumes, and fights that none of these fighters of today can duplicate or overshadow. That's just my thoughts for now. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Bruce Vayner, I'm out.